Megan won't be here tonight. I think it's her birthday. Oh, oh that's oh. funny. Mine's tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so that's that's the reason. So we should wish her a happy birthday. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ruth. Oh, should be you. recorded in the minutes. <laughs> be recorded on a videotape if you want, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as we've said at each and every meeting, this is recorded audio and video. Uh, Ruth has got Ruth <coughs> cards if you need to find where uh, to find this. And with that, uh, let's go to public comment. Do you have any? No, I guess I'm the only public here. Uh, actually, I have uh, three points to make. Uh, the first one is that um, the Enterprise Fund, is, as I read it, is, uh, has a fee that's for service and goods. So the service would be removing stormwater, uh, the goods would be building a pumping station or something of that sort. But last week, uh, Dan mentioned a credit fund. So I'm not sure how you want to pay for it, but I don't think you can attach it to the fee. So you may want to do something else, but having a credit fund that comes off, that peels off the enterprise fee doesn't sound kosher. Uh, the second thing is um, about uh, fairness and equitabil equ equability and efficiency. And one thing that Terry mentioned was that with an enterprise fund, you're taxing not only the 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 um, nonprofits, but you're you're taxing the nonprofits and the citizens, so that you could spread the cost over a larger portion of the people. So this weekend, <clears throat> I was looking at Proposition 2 and a half. I probably shouldn't have looked at it, but I did. And Proposition 2 and a half wants to raise two and a half million dollars. So then I went to the rate, which is 79 cents, and I calculated what I should pay. And then I took 80% of that number, and that number would be what it cost me to leverage $2 million for the city. The Enterprise Fund wants to leverage $2 million. So basically, if I look at the table that you sent me, and I look to see how much I pay for each one of the methods, that number should be less than what I'm paying for Proposition 2.5 because it's spread over more customers. So what I then did is I calculated what I'd pay for each method and it looks fine except when I come to the Clark method. When I come to the Clark method I'm paying $95 more in the, clay, in the case of the, the fund that's, what is it, it's with the exclusion, you've got two methods, with the exclusion and without the exclusion. In the case without the exclusion, I would pay $95 more to the enterprise fund to leverage $2 million. And in the other case, I think it was $195 more to leverage $2 million. So there's probably some instances in the category that I fall in where people may be paying more money than they would be with property tax. And the third point that I noticed was that for the commons fee, I think they, uh, Robert says that he wants to exclude state and federal. Why exclude them? Because we won't get any money. <laughs> but you the don't VA. know unless you try. The VA can pay, I believe, and I don't believe any will get any money from anybody else. Well, you don't know unless you ask. I, th I thought last week we determined that we would get money from everybody. We just couldn't get it from the highways. But that was... Well, the, the point that came to my mind is that uh, Route 91, the drainage for Route 91 has always been bad, and Ventures Field Road and Cross Path are always flooded because they never clean the drains. Yeah. Right. So, come on, guys. Hmm. They can't clean the drains. They ought to be able to pay for some stormwater drainage. That's all I got to say. <clears throat>
I'm confused about Fred's comments. Fred, could you help me on this chart? Is, is it your for project? Four, four family. And what what, what is your house and what, what, where do you get the numbers from? Um, on the um, four unit one. So you're a four unit. I'm down here. Okay. So if, what that means is because you're on a small lot. Yeah. And in the, but that doesn't have individual totals. I calculated it. I have a spreadsheet at home. And how did you calculate them? I used the numbers that you have on the top. Well, that's a really good point, though, Fred, if you're going to end up paying more than it would be if... And there may be other people in that category right, you're right. that may, may wind up paying more. Okay. Of course, the saving thing is that all the other people won't look. Well, no, we need to know, though. Yeah. That's... Because you know, that'll come up when they start to look. <laughs> they won't look at that. They won't do the comparison, you mean? To the, I yeah. Well, they might though. Yeah. Well, because it's, yeah, it's the same dollar amount going at the same time. Of course, if you do choose the Clark <laughs> method, and that's the final method, you'll hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> what more? Any more public comments? Let Let's go to uh, approval of the minutes. We've got three sets of approval. minutes. Approval. Do you want to approve them all, all together? Move the pool of all three. Or do you want to do them one at a time? There's all two three. there. Um, I sent one out twice. But I'm oh, okay. Uh, I, sent the, I sent April 25th out in a format that not everybody could open. So I, I sent the 25th twice and the second once and the ninth was out. So I moved the pool of two sets of minutes. And I'll second if I'm allowed to work with Jim on some Scribner's errors that are in there. You. Uh, does the committee uh, accept Jim's author to be a grammarian? No, no, no. <laughs> it's just that I happened to pick up a few. No, no. And one of them was I wasn't at the meeting that I was quoted in. Yeah, I, I think, the I think yeah, there was one I came I think the committee will accept that, but I want to make sure of that. I, he, I hear an assent to that. So, motions were made and seconded. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Looks like it's unanimous. Uh, we've had this item on the agenda every time, and we have it one more time. If there are any new, what I've chosen to call fee algorithms, do we have one? Yes, we do. Okay. We have the new Reckman Culhane algorithm. Culhane Reckman. Well, <laughs> 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 My apologies. <laughs> really want your name on this, huh? <laughs> Reckman, Reckman I would call it Reckman Culhane. Yeah, right? <laughs> Reckman et al. Would even be, uh... And you'll see this on the spreadsheet that we all have, which has got it's the city of Hampton. That's with, that new one. That's right, the one that we should have gotten this morning. Yeah. Does anybody need a copy of that one? Yeah, I need a copy of that one. Getting good with that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, we can use a bigger cup. <laughs> I learned how to open and print things off of my Apple. This is the one I was looking at. All right. And I want to thank uh, 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 Jim Hill for the Yep, figuring figuring out our confusing direction. And preparing all the documents that you have, we have before us today. For tonight, I should say. I know you want a bigger one, John. I'll take that. Perfect. Thank you. You need a copy of that? Much easier. No, I have that. Thank you. I have that. These are much, much yeah. better. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do. Bucks. I'll take this. <laughs> 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 is, is this new big spreadsheet? Has it got the, the same, same numbers? Same as it was in the mail. Okay. Can you dance and get that through a thing? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So one thing I realized was that it wasn't I didn't wasn't sure I remembered what our Culhane 
and Reckman formulas were based on. So I went back and looked at the documents that Jim prepared. And I just wanted, you know, I want to remind everybody what the basis of the assumptions of this are. Um, the commons fee we propose, and I know some people don't like a commons fee, and you, that's fine, but the commons fee we propose is based simply on gross lot size, how big your property is. Doesn't make a difference. What you got on? Gross lot size. Okay. Um, we use the fact that the city owns about 20% of the gross impervious area to determine the 20% of the total budget to be assigned to the commons. I realize there's a contradiction between the impervious area amount for the, the city owns, which is about 20, and the total property, which is far less than that. But that takes the impervious area the city has and applies it to the commons, if you will. Does that make sense to people? Okay. Um, I'll talk in a minute about different ways that the commons fee might be raised, but you should be aware that gross lot size is the only determinant of the commons fees. The parcel fee, on the other hand, is determined only by impervious service. If you've got a mile of impervious service, you pay twice what somebody's got half a mile pays. That's the only basis for the parcel fee. Okay. You can see the effects in the model of this approach if you look at the table comparing the various models that Jim just passed out to us. So if we look at undeveloped land, and we see the commons included and commons portion only, so the commons portion is all of what undeveloped landowners will pay, except in the case of Grove Food in Northampton, in which case there's a $2 difference. So, um, so the commons fee is the only thing that those kind of properties would have to pay. Okay. For other properties like Coca-Cola or the VA Medical Center, the commons separate is the dominant factor. So if you look at them at the, at the bottom down there. So there's Coca-Cola and the... Mm -hmm. The common portion is very small because they've got lots of impervious area on their property. So for the parcel fee, it's only impervious surface. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, if this model were adopted by the city, the question of agricultural exemptions would be preempted by the model. So this gives a big break to all undeveloped and agricultural lands, and city conservation land would gain, this, gain the same benefit. So this, our model, takes agriculture, builds in agricultural exemptions by making the parcel fee based purely on impervious surface. That makes sense. Okay. Everybody got that? Yes. No. No. I'm lost. Okay. So, the commons fee <clears throat> is based on gross area. Got that. The parcel fee is based on impervious surface. Yeah. And we say it's eighty percent parcel fee, twenty percent commons fee. For the overall budget. For the whole. For the how the formula would be. That's right. right. That makes sense, Ruth. It was the exclusion so, discussion. I did be confused you. Yeah, so. Yeah. So the way, so because, really of, getting... because of those decisions, those choices about how we build different property, if you've got 12 square miles out in Leeds and no impervious surface, your parcel fee is zero. But you're going to have a pretty substantial comments. You might. You might. The point I'm making is that we try, I, we try to address, in my mind, balance between gross property area, which is all common fee for us, and impervious surface, which is pure parcel fee. So you're not looking at this on the spreadsheet, this top part, where it's just going in a tier thing? No, our, resident, our the residential is still the same. We didn't change that. It's still zero to half acre, half to one, and one to three. And after that, all properties get measured. Electronically. Okay, so the, the amount of impervious area on houses is an average of based on lot size and the data the city has. Okay, I assume so it's it, accurate. It doesn't matter on houses then and how much impervious area you have. That's it's just correct. Because okay. 'Cause you're averaged in with all of your similar property owners. I got it now. Okay. Okay. 
Bob, just to make sure we're, we're clear here, if we take the first item uh, on the spreadsheet mm -hmm. and we'll go to your model, it says $97 common included, commons portion only, six. So yep. the parcel fee is $91. It's the bulk and that of that fee. fee, absolutely correct. It's $91. It's, it's confusing the way it's sort of laid out here. It's okay, so I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear. So do we see the difference in carry in my model between a big piece of undeveloped land, which will pay a substantial common fee, and no parcel fee, and another acre of blacktop downtown, which is going to pay a substantial parcel fee and a relatively trivial common fee. Does that make sense? Well, I understand it, but, I'm just, but the, the justification for, I mean, what? Why is that fair and equitable? I, I, and I, I guess I was torn between, we, we have, we all know this, there's so many sources of stormwater runoff, and, we can, and the city can only build, only has certain information. If we could send everybody a bill, that'd be a whole different thing. But we can't do the city can't do that. So I was trying to balance, and I think I can speak for Terry here too. I hope a model that says if you've got a square mile in Leeds that's undeveloped, you shouldn't have to pay much money, except for the benefit that you get from the roads and the schools, which is the commons fee. So I was trying to balance the value of undeveloped property and agricultural property in our city all of which benefits from our city, but doesn't make any much runoff, against large commercial properties, wherever they happen to be. And, and I, you know, because it really is clear to me, that blacktop is the worst by far. And so that's the logic. I'm trying to balance, say, let's put the gross, the benefits of the city on the common side, and the impervious surface, you get impervious surface, you get smacked. That didn't, that's, that, that's too strong a word. Do you think? But so my, our model has impervious surface taking all of the parcel fee. Make sure people understand my logic. What happens to the guy that's put his? 40 or 50 acres into some kind of a program that... Uh, I assume he would get some kind of exemption, but... You, the, all right, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying... That not, nothing, if, if there's a, a conservation easement on a property, they should just pay, in our model, the commons. Mm -hmm. have no parcel. Okay. That'd, be, that'd be my model for exemptions and the credit. Do you have credits in here? No, no, this is has, we're going to have to, we're going to talk, I'm sure, at length tonight about whether to exempt certain kinds of property, whether to give credits to other kind of properties for work that they do that benefits us all. Yeah, this credits. has nothing to do with exemptions or credits, except to point out that a real, this model builds in a great deal for agricultural land and conservation land. And undeve undeveloped land of all types. I like this. There's something that's been going around in my mind, and I don't know if it's going to affect this or not, but I was in another meeting because I film a lot of meetings, and they're talking now about changing the UA, UCA, UCB, and UCC. You are, you are B and you are C, that's right. Yeah, and they're going to be able to build a lot more units onto these lots that right now can only have one. Yeah. How is that going to affect? It, we, it, it, it doesn't do what we're doing. It's not relevant to our discussion. I agree it's a concern in the city, in the zoning change, but it's nothing to do with what they'll have to pay by whatever form that we end up with. Okay. So do people understand my logic, even if you don't agree with it? I like that. Okay. Then we come to the question of the commons. And I know we all disagree about whether or not there should be a commons. So... We can think of three ways to deal with it. The first is to ignore it and just use commons included figures in the Colhane Reckman model. Just forget about the commons. Okay. 
I don't think that's the right way to go because the commons fee allows us to charge ourselves in a broader way for all the things that we benefit from that are, are our city, which is ourselves. So what I'm saying here is that the <coughs> Alex put it really well. If we could bill every individual their one thirty thousand of the commons fee, that would be the ideal way to do it. Because it seems to me, I agree, that we all benefit. Every citizen, every resident of Northampton benefits equally from our city. So if we could find a way to build the commons fee by the head, that'd be great. I don't know that it's worth trying to do that, but it's certainly a, a goal. So one one thing, we, one reason to keep the commons fee broken out is to figure out a way to build that 20% of our model to all property, which is tough in North Hampton. Let me go back. Let me go back to, to what I was going to say before. So we can e ignore it. We can recommend that the city pay roughly four hundred thousand dollars that they now pay to the general fund from the general fund every year to the to pay for the common fee, if you will. The disadvantage of that, or that that money only comes from property owners, doesn't come from nonprofits or other institutions, um, and it doesn't move us towards my per capita goal to build the common speed. Okay. And that would be, if we could figure out a way here among us that the city can do that relatively easy, that would let, that would build people almost by the head. That would be a great thing. So we can forget about it. We can recommend the city pay it. And it, it, the $400,000 is not a, it's a soft, very soft number. There's, the city pays for stormwater and flood control through half a dozen different mechanisms. And what you say to me, Terry, last year the stormwater <laughs> allotment was $218,000, right? Two eighteen dollars for uh, personnel and... Um services, uh, and then there was about $95,000 for debt service for past projects. So you could say three fifteen dollars total, but then there are capital requirements that come up from time to time, and you might have to look back over several years to figure out what the average of capital requirements were. Yeah. But so three It's a fuzzy number. Yeah. It turns so, out it's hard to say yeah. with precision, it's X amount. And so... It's that, not fuzzy, it changes every year. Exactly. <laughs> Fuzzy means inaccurate. <laughs> so if you no, know, so I'd love to have a discussion at some point tonight about first of all whether we like including the ex keeping the common fee separate, billing it separate, and if we do, how we can do that as fairly and equitably as possible. That's all I got to say. Terry, you want to add anything? Um, May I? Just uh, a second. Is the committee yeah. okay with Terry speaking? <coughs> I guess that only one thing I'd like to circle back to is um, <clears throat> the 2080 split there wasn't initially pulled out of a hat. That There are various ways of looking at how much municipal property there is in the city that keeps coming out around 20%. Uh, so that was the genesis of the original 2080 split. Uh, Interestingly, Doug and Jim have come across numerous other entities that have used a similar split to make their program work. One thing you'll notice about this, I, I believe, is that the numbers look pretty good. Everyone seems to pay a reasonable amount of money. No one's getting hammered. Um, it, it seems to address the issue of making sure that everyone makes at least some contribution. The 50-acre parcel, the 40-acre parcel that Jim mentioned a few moments ago, I quickly looked, would pay about $500 a year. Uh, for someone who owns 40 acres of land in Northampton, that doesn't seem crazy. Um, and that was Jim or, uh, Bob's point about maybe we don't need exemptions. If we have a modest commons fee, it's hard to believe anyone with substantial land would object to a, a modest annual charge. 
that's about all I have. But in any event, the 80-20 split comes originally from the issue that the municipality owns about 20% of the property in the city. And it's completely good luck that 20% of $2 million is $400,000. Uh, on this graph, uh, 50 acres pays $1,170 in yes. common space. <coughs> I should look at the graph? Yeah. Bob, that's right, 1170 So I, I, I would go with the graph, Alex. Yeah. Okay. The chart, yeah. Shouldn't we be looking to raise more than what we're looking at if we here? Just, if we have, based on our discussion about exemptions and credits, that's right. we should think about needing another... Something, but that can be yeah. that or can be done without read. Yeah, but that's different. That's a different discussion. Right. I mean, the, we're the, just talking now about the formula. The formula looks good. It looks great. It's got bottom. The top of it's got to be raised though, because, for instance, if you say to the city, uh, "We're going to exempt so much if you put in a system in the schools to educate," right. Uh, people on yeah, yeah. flood control and uh, stormwater runoff. Yeah. But I would hope that the total exemptions we might recommend would be no more than 5 or 10 percent. Could, could very well be. I don't see a... Because if we choose this model, undeveloped land and open land, just everything but the common fee. Well, I, I, I just brought it up. I yeah. can't wait to hear Chris's <laughs> presentation on exemptions tonight. If we got more questions of, of Bob about this, uh, the fee, something you don't understand? I just have one quick one just because I don't think I understand. Um, you've got comments included for the single family for what's here. The comments that you're talking about including now, that's for just municipal and the city and in addition to what's no, here? No, what I'm talking about is what's on this chart. The twenty percent that we're talking about is of the in, budget is in addition to what's no, in? it's in the chart. So you look oh, at okay. you see the commons included. Yeah, it adds up to two million eighty-four thousand dollars. Right. The next column, commons only, adds up to four hundred thousand dollars. Round numbers. So that's the the commons itself. If you if we broke it out, yeah. Okay, so in so order, the, if we decided to maintain a separate commons. Okay. That means that each of the co of the numbers in commons included would go down. You would subtract by the commons portion. Okay, but and you then would... we would bill for the commons portion by whatever way we decide is fair. Okay, so you've already included the commons in the first column. Which yes. Is... Okay, so okay. Cause... And the second column, just okay. to tell you how much of that for each property is commons. That's it. We okay. don't okay. have a yeah. okay. figure that's. We don't have a separate parcel fee and commons fee like we have had before. I got it. I got it. Okay. Well, that's very Thank clear. you. I just didn't clear? have it yeah. in my head. That's all. More questions? Just to clarify that, yeah. just one more step. So the commons portion only fee would be the bill sent to the city? If we choose to go that way, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. Then we don't have numbers that would let us see on this page what that would make each bill be. The parcel, we don't have a parcel fee number. Oh, because they have to. Because you have to uh, read those the, the, the schools. Subtract yeah. the, the number in the commons portion only from the commons included. We don't have a parcel fee. Well, that would be a static number unless we got acquired more property. Not going to change much. Right. That's right. Well, it would change. Are you you're talking about how to bill? How we would build a yeah, city? Yeah, we started the utility based on a 20% ratio. You know, the but, city owns 20%. But the that. city, right, but this, in Bob's model, the city isn't paying anything. Well, it could pay. That's what's one of the options. We yeah. could say but the city's going to pay for they, they, they do. If you take the commons only, that would be the figure the city would pay. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. So we could decide that the city's going to cough up their share of the commons money from the general fund. So you've just, you, if you if you remove that commons only portion, you've included an option that does not include a commons fee. 
Yeah, except it's not shown on this page. It's, it's within that. It's within, but it's a difference between those two columns. It's basically, it's basically that one minus that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So which is essentially starting to get to where we can compare all these options without a common space. Yeah. Right? So that's that's helpful, yeah. too. So, so we know that the number without a common space. Yeah. And I don't good. really think it makes that much difference. I mean, philosophically, I... In like the commons fee because it allows us to charge ourselves on a different with a different logic. Except well, that. Well, Bob, you were in here not so long ago on the other side of that. What what did you learn or what emotional or psychological experience did you have to cause you to change? I'm just trying to move us towards a clear resolution here. Yeah, no, no, I, that's not my question. Yeah? What, what did you learn to cause you to want to change? In my whole life, and no, no, no. In this, <laughs> this particular case, I mean, I'm just worried about this case. I'm not the whole life business. That's, that'll take us too long. Well, when people change their mind, I look for a reason and I try to understand. Well, my good friend David the other night proposed a motion and then voted against it and then candidly told us, You guys convinced me because yeah. I understood that change. Yeah. Now, I don't understand this change. Well, I'm, I guess what I'm I would confused. say, and I'm Speaking purely for myself here, this is a complicated problem. And we've looked at it through half a dozen different lenses. And I've, and I've been trying to put together a logic that is comfortable for me, about that's fair and equitable for the city, about how to pay for this expense. And so I can see the logic that says the city should pay. I don't, that wouldn't be my personal choice, but I understand that logic. You know, I can see a logic that says, because we know that there are very few other cities and towns that make the city pay anything, I think. So there, there's logic. So the point I'm making is that whether it's, I've gone through a, a complex process in the course of our six week together trying to balance out all these various factors from gross property area to impervious surface, the common fee. And so this is my, and I hope we have a good discussion tonight. If we want to build the common fee in a creative way, I'd love to hear it tonight. I, Alex, I don't be against our side. So, I'm not, fundamentally, I mean, the common fee was sort of one of the original things sort of brought to the table. And I understand the motivation very clearly behind it. The part that I have that I have trouble with is trying to make this distinction between something that, you know, is sort of this common interest and something that is not, that is really a site specific. Yeah. Yeah. In my mind, all of it is the common interest because it's really difficult to apply any singular benefit to an individual property. So what we're doing, unlike, you know, my sewer fee and my water fee, which has a direct, get, I get something or something goes away from my property <laughs> that I wouldn't really want to have. You know, <laughs> and that... And so all of the infrastructure is the is commons, and this whole thing is a commons fee. That's where I okay. understand. So I think the motivation is, is is of trying to create this part of the fee that captures undeveloped land mm -hmm. in a fair and equitable way. I th I think that is a goal that we have to. You know, I embrace that. I have a f I am concerned about the the framing of it could actually make it more difficult for people to understand because I see all of this as a commons fee. And the argument I would raise in response to that is that you get, your kids go to school, you get all kind of benefits from being a citizen of the city, the police and the fire department take care of your house. So there are things you get which are much more specific from being a resident of North Hand that are not that don't benefit undeveloped property. 
that I'm trying to say? That there are things that we get from being citizens of Northampton, from paying our taxes, that are different than the commons we all are together. I certainly understand your philosophical point, but I'm going to, I'm going to argue that the reason for the commons, Steve, is because we all do benefit from our schools, our water treatment plant, all the infrastructure we own together, and that's different than, than the benefit of the general watershed collective. That, does that not make sense? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Alex? <laughs> it's it's it's, it's my, philosophically. My, okay, Alex. My problem is that uh, the commons fee makes sense to me if you have a way of billing uh, a in a way that that represents commons fee. But in fact, your your uh, gross uh, permeable area it just doesn't. Doesn't connect. Do that. Doesn't link in my mind. Yeah. So I, it, it seems just it's sort of to make as much sense to subtract the city, not charge the city at all, just subtract right. it from the equation, and and raise this money yeah. from the on a. On and that's what we'd have system. if we did the common thing included in the column, whatever whatever credits we do. But yes, you're right. No charge to the city. But I. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Well, I'm not sure. Are, are we at the point where we're going to vote again on commons? Well, to jump ahead, I created this little sheet, which we can't see very well here, but which I sent to everybody, and I listed the principles that we kind of talked about last time. And I was head of a mind to see, go go around the table and get a rough view of where people were on each of these, so if there was, say, a half a dozen we could agree on, kind of draw a line and say, okay, we'll put those in the mostly agreed on bucket, and then ones that are halfway agreed to, we'll put in another bucket, and the ones that we need, we're going to do battle over in the third bucket, or maybe we'll only have two buckets. I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen to vote, okay, so I can't predict, but I wasn't actually going to vote, I was just going to take a small a show of hands. Uh, and I was either going to put the numbers up or get Dan to put them up so we could look at this chart. And I was going to do that a little bit later in the meeting after we talked about some other items because some of the items on that chart are, are discussion items here. I wasn't actually going to vote. Now, if the committee wants to vote, I'm, I'm happy to accept the motions and we'll go do that. Yeah? I think uh, you're absolutely correct. At the end of the meeting, after we hear the discussion around the table and the presentations that each one of the members may want to bring, then do that one. Yeah. And do a straw poll, and then yeah. we should have some more clarity about where we are. Yeah, so I, 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 my, my idea that we yeah. have some kind of a matrix and we'd see, are we all over the map or are half of those uh, everybody's agreed to and half aren't, and then we can figure out what to do next. Uh, the next item on the agenda. Uh, is the feedback on the way Yeah, from Paul Spector. And I guess the uh, met with Jim or sent Jim an email or something, and Jim then sent us all email. And, uh, and I'll just read what he's looking for. The conference committee, that's the group that appointed us, indicated that one important element of the task force is to vote to recommend or not recommend that a new enterprise fund be implemented as the means to meet city stormwater and flood control obligations. To me, that means we have to vote whether we think we ought to establish an enterprise fund or not. Secondly, they requested the task force make recommendations for a fair and equitable fee structure. It says nothing here about that that's targeted to a raise a fixed amount of money, and we ought to keep that in mind because as time goes forward, we'll use this algorithm or this calculation to raise more or less money depending on the needs. So we shouldn't get stuck on uh, the, the two million dollars we've used as a model and I think it's a good model. I have no problem with that. If the task force can agree on one recommendation with details that should be presented, if more than one fee structure is included in the recommendations, the conference committee would appreciate information on the pros and cons 
of the different fee structures. Uh, and then the report should include some description of the basis for decision making so that the conference committee can best understand how we did that. Well, we've got a record of what we've done here, so I, I think that's a pretty straightforward thing. So that's what they're looking for, and uh, they want it, uh, a written copy, a PDF copy as well. And they didn't say anything about a presentation to city council or the committee. So I don't know if that's going to come up in the future or not. But uh, So that's what they're looking for. And when we get down at the end of the uh, meeting, or near the end of the meeting today, I want to, we need to talk about who's going to do the writing for this and kind of how we're going to do it. John. Just so I understand there was no reference to time frame. The time frame is still. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, I'm I'm operating under the assumption they're looking for it at the end of May. Jim? Uh, the Joint Committee did discuss time frame, um, and I didn't put it in the format of the email thing, but they're um, still looking for input by May 31st, as they previously indicated, so there wasn't any change in that. Have we actually gone ahead and formally requested any extension? Uh, we have not. I certainly have. Well, I think we clearly had the discussion when Paul was discussion, here about our but, uh, ability to meet the deadline. Yeah, Paul was very clear that he was not here as a counselor. He was. So I believe the deadline's clear uh, to them, and they're saying you got to do it. I've made clear in a couple of emails that I thought the time frame was pretty tight, uh, but I didn't say no. We can't do it. We need 30 days or 60 days. That's something that the committee could uh, take a vote on if they <coughs> want, and we could formally communicate. Uh, to whoever that we either can't make it or don't think we can make it or we need 30 more days or a lot of things we can do. Rick? Uh, the, the missive to vote on whether we should have, have a stormwater utility, is that a new task that we're supposed to be? Uh, well, no. Did that take no. It's not. It was a clear else? piece of our initial charge. Yeah. We, that was our first yeah. two meetings. Two votes. We yeah. went through that. Mm -hmm. And so part of what Paul would like from us is a, a formal sort of declaration within our final report that... I thought that when the email, when, it, when Owen uh, first contacted me, I thought at some point it said there was no choice, that we have to raise these funds. And... Uh, storm water utility was an option, so we're you know, that is true, right? That's that's correct, right? So but so we there are other we could make the city pay the whole two million bucks, right? Well, <laughs> so we had so those. Are, we, are we eliminating any other option by voting for a utility? Tonight? That's what this process has been about. We had the long presentation in our first meeting with Karen right. so about we, the other. We did that already, right? Yeah. And and is, is it a fee or is it a enterprise fund? Uh, and. Uh, but Bob, how did they handle fees for the water department when they established the ambulance? They created a fund that all of the money went into, and the fees were, and the expenses were billed to it. But it wasn't called an enterprise fund. Could I, could I just step in? I'm sorry to interrupt, but Rick, uh, it says, whereas though all, all the work is needed and beneficial, it is not a matter of choice. Right. That's the yeah, question. That's, that's what, this is the charge, right. and I think rather than uh, people referring to, you know, what they think or what they remember, I always I always use this as a template for what I'm trying to accomplish in this meeting because that this is this this isn't for us to pick apart or argue with. This is what we're supposed to follow. And sometimes I find that we're getting sidetracked, uh, and I'm trying to stick to this charge, but it is not a matter of choice. So we don't we don't have a choice here, and then from that. I can continue reading, uh, to deliberate in public, conform to the principles of best practices, as referred to in the city's best practices, final recommendations, to examine ways in which these costs could be funded. Now, no disrespect, Bob, but I don't think we should be, we just should be determining how they're going to be built. I don't think that's our charge here, but in how we're going to fund them, uh, that that's what we should be looking at, looking at what other communities have done in our own enterprise fund system, and then perhaps the billing part becomes under this, to recommend the general principles which should guide the new funding with particular focus on equity and transparency, and then to offer recommendations about actual formulas that might be employed. 
So I think Emery's board is very good, and I have no problem doing it an hour later, as Jim recommended. Uh, but I think we really need to stick to these four, this four-piece charge, and follow that so we can come to some type of recommendation. So council respect and this group can get something from this. I think I think it will be a lot clearer for us if we stick always to what is in this charge. My my suggestion on that. And that's not an order. It's just a, <laughs> and I do want to say that we do have a quorum on shirts here tonight. Ruth, Emery, Terry, Ned, and myself did determine that purple was <laughs> <laughs> The wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> right. we'll have to, get but to go back to what I, I thought I heard Rick asking was, and one of the things we heard Citizen Inspector say at the last meeting was, it would be helpful to the Joint Committee for us to take a vote specifically, and not at the end of the process, on whether or not we felt our outcome was going to include in the creation of an enterprise fund. And clearly that's not part of the charter, and it remains to, you know... Not part of the charter. Not part of the <coughs> charter, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that um, we may want to discuss whether we want to go beyond that, given the fact that we've gotten a specific request on that. Yeah. Um, did you hear something different? Absolutely. Okay. So the beginning, our first three meetings, in fact, David, you brought us back to it mm -hmm. at least once, if not twice. That first part of the charge, which was, should it be a utility? Should it be an override or something else? And we, deter we debated about this and came to and uh, voted and have to go back and, and pull the minutes out because I know there was a specific vote that that's how we were going to go. I'm, if, I'm, if I'm wrong on that... When you say, I'm sorry, when you say that's how we're going to go, what, what is that? The utility that we okay, were going right. we to develop and that the rest of our, our time was going to be spent looking at how, what the utility model would look like. Right, okay. So, 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 you're, so, so what you're saying is we've already done what I think we've already do. done it. I I'm, could be wrong. I'm more than happy to agree with you on that. I think you're probably right that we have. Um, but then he probably needs to be informed specifically about that. That should just be in our final report that we, you know, I think that we deliberated, yeah. discussed, some, you know, were presented with and deliberated the pros and cons of an override. And it's, you have to go back and look at all the things that we discussed and that we agreed that a utility would be the most fair and equitable way to incorporate and include, be include as inclusive as possible, all of the stakeholders. And I'm not, I, I'm, I don't want to be splitting hairs, but let's assume that everything, as you said, and we've already done the vote, and we know where we are on this, and we've decided we're creating a utility. For some reason, that hasn't translated to these guys. <laughs> Is all I'm saying to to, to, to the joint. Well, obviously to citizen inspector and and from the, from the charge we got in his response after Absolutely. the joint committee's meeting. Am I wrong? Uh, I don't actually recall a vote being taken. I don't know what other people. I mean, we can go back. There was general consensus that all these things were discussed, and then things were moving in a particular direction. Was my recollection. There have been very few votes taken um, by the by the committee that I've that I've written out. So. Um, I'd be happy to go back and check. My memory is, is definitely not uh, you know, crisp. But Dan, yeah, Dan, my recollection is we did have those discussions and that we came to the conclusion that to um, get everybody under the tent, that the utility was really the uh, option. But I agree. I don't think that we voted on that. And I guess more to the point is... <clears throat> Given that what we're going to provide to the council is going to carry weight, um, are we the ones deciding that the city's going to have a utility? That's what sort of... We're the ones recommending. We're, we're recommending. Recommend that. Only. Yeah, recommend. we're recommending. That they change once it hits the council floor. Yep. Okay. Is there any bodies? That's, that's just, that's my yeah. concern because, you know, I feel like we yeah. need a utility. I yeah. would vote yes for that. Just but I, I don't think that everyone on that on the, I don't think we can submit that as a, as a full committee unless we vote on it. So is, well, there, is everyone the, on the task force comfortable with the idea of the utility? Does somebody want to make a motion and we'll just put this I thing to bed? I would move that we take a vote on, on the... Uh, well, do you just make the motion on the uh, uh, utility or whatever you want? We'll just, if it passes, we'll be done. Except with a formula. 
Okay. You want to do that? Well, well we'll just just to raise the money by utility. We're not going to pull yeah. around the formula. Okay, then it's I would just that we recommend to the council that we uh, form a utility to raise the funds for uh, the stormwater and flood control issues facing the city. Somebody want to second that? I'll second it for purposes of discussion. How do you define utility? That's, I'm learning. Uh, well, that's a, that's a good good point. Um, yeah, it could mean a lot of things. Uh, Hoyoke has a Hoyoke has a water utility that's separate from everything. But we're just really trying to respond to your to their yeah, request I, I that we say. Well, well, to eliminate sure the comments, that people I, know. Would, I would that issue. I would state it um, more like every property owner in the city of Northampton. Um, is going to be asked to contribute to a fund to handle the stormwater and flooding issues facing the city and all the deferred. I don't think we need to go that far. I think we don't need to go that far. We just say you think is a good idea. That's all we're voting on now, it seems to me. You guys have more experience in this than I. Is there is there a specific difference between the utility and, and an enterprise fund? There is. I think so. Terry knows. Terry's do, good. Do, everybody willing to Terry the... Yeah. I've spent some time speaking with the Department of Revenue about this. <clears throat> uh, the point I wanted to make a moment ago is the discussion actually, I believe, was about should the money be raised by a fee. And I think over time, fee has become enterprise, has become utility, has become some other things. And okay. you can see that the best vehicle for a fee might, in fact, be a utility funded by an enterprise fund. But I think. The original discussion was just about should it be taxes, should it be an override, should it be a fee. Well, that's good. Okay. So I just I don't know if that helps, but I'm just trying to make it simpler. Yeah. There's another discussion to be had from the Department of Revenue about what's the best way to package the fee. But I'm not sure that you need to that's us. dig into that. Do you want to modify your motion to say the fee do you think a fee should be a used fee system? I think that we should I'll make a motion that we recommend to the city council um, that we raise a fee uh, in the city to handle the stormwater and flood emissions. You second that? Mm -hmm. Discussion? More discussion? I'm going to ask that we modify it to say include a fee because I don't want to, I don't want the language to look like it's precluding other alternatives. Okay. Fine. Accept. You accept? More discussion? Uh, can you word it as it has? Sure, I move that. Um, no, he moved. Okay. Just word it the way uh, with the original. That, that we recommend that um, uh, funding for uh, to deal with the issue of stormwater include a fee. Second. Accepted. Yeah. More discussion? Do you want to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I, I'm going to oppose that. I, I don't think, I go back to the three C's that I talked about. I don't think we're consistent. I think we drift during these meetings, and that's okay because of the discussions out here. If it's a fee, I still question the $2 million. Okay, is that the right number? So I'm just not to closure on a lot of stuff where I can comfortably say, yeah, I'm, I'm there. There's just a lot of open ends. You want to vote no or abstain or what? no? I, I said no. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I abstain. So now we need to count, right, to make sure we get a record. Let's let's go back. We got how many? Four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven four. We had one no and one abstention. You voted two abstentions. I'm going to abstain. If we if I have to break a tie, I will. Otherwise, yeah. I don't intend to vote. You know, the minutes of uh, April 4th, the uh, action, I, which minutes that we approved, the meeting was summarized that the task force had examined ways to meet funding requirements, that a review and discussion had occurred regarding the approach used by other communities to meet funding needs, and that as a general principle, well, every property owner should participate, including the city, that impervious area and total property area are factors to be considered for a fee formula, and that credit should be considered. But was that a vote? 
No, just an army. We took an army. No. That, that's, that was my concern. Okay, you want to see? Okay. Uh, we'll I, I couldn't, I could see the discussion, but I couldn't find a vote. Yeah. No, I don't think there was a vote. So, so we had a vote. Now, let's go back. Our uh, Spectre asked this. We can do as we want. This is our committee. To recommend or not recommend that a new enterprise fund be implemented. That's a very specific directive or, or to put to us. You know, an enterprise is a that's a separate uh, unique entity. You can get fees in other ways other than enterprise funds. Or enterprise. I think we just voted that it would be a fee, not an enterprise fund. So uh, that doesn't mean that the enterprise fund can charge fees. You get your sewer bill and your water bill. I'm yeah. looking through here. We got enterprise funds. We got fees. Yeah. We got bills. Well, we got taxes. Right here, here. Stuff, uh, you know. I, I, well, I just wanted to be yeah. clear of what yeah. we voted, and then for what what uh, Paul Spector asked us. Uh, Emery, I see Ned as his hand raised. I don't know whether you can yeah. see him. That was you? before your vote. That yeah, was before your vote. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Uh oh. Uh, well, we're willing to hear Ned out. I mean, if, if, if you have something to say, let, let's hear it, because... It was just the last motion that uh, Mr. Helman made <clears throat> didn't include plug control. Just oh, yeah, one. my bad, sorry. I think I wrote down stormwater and plug You control. did say stormwater. We had posted on the, uh, on the website early on a, a document about enterprise funds and how they're set up by cities to manage fee systems, fee run systems. Mm -hmm. So money that's generated through a fee is managed through an enterprise fund in ways that are determined by the Department of Revenue. Described in that document that we were posted on the website, taxes are taxes that are raised through general taxation are handled in a different way. So I think in, in my opinion, and you know I'm probably not an expert in this at all, but to me there's only limited ways that the city can take money <coughs> and then use it. Right. Uh, general taxation would be one of those, certain fees or another another way. Um, given the scale of what you're talking about for fees, the amount of revenue, a couple million bucks a year, how that money would be used in terms of bonding, construction of things, that to me is a little bit different than like a building permit application fee, which might be a few thousand dollars, several ten thousand dollars a year versus a couple million. So I think um, as a matter of principle, in my opinion, you're probably talking about an enterprise fund. The details of how that fund works is described in the Department of Revenue document we have on the website if you want to, if you could delve into that. But, um, that that's my, point. my concern is Paul asked a specific yeah. question here, and we've not voted, and, and I don't think that we necessarily have to vote. Just because he's asked us to, the committee has a mind of its own, and we have a right to vote, and we can make a recommendation, and it may or may not be aligned with what he's looking for. I mean, I, I'm perfectly comfortable doing that. I just I want everybody to know <laughs> we've done something not quite what he had in mind. And One last thought about the fees is that in some, in some circumstances where the city charges a fees for some permit applications and things, those fees, some of them go into the general fund. So if it's not a big number, they go into the general fund, and then those monies that are in the general fund are then reallocated into department uses through the normal budgeting process. So again... You know, I think the concept that people are talking about here, the task force, is a certain amount of revenue is necessary, it needs to be raised, it needs to be dedicated for the uses that you've been talking about for the past couple of months. So sort of a separate dedicated fund raised through fees seems to be the sort of system that's being discussed here. Um, I don't, again, I don't know if that helps, but that's, you know, there, there are limited ways the city can take your money and use it. That's right. I, I've always uh, I've assumed that uh, at the point where we began really to talk about fees and look what other cities had done, uh, the charge includes uh, looking at our own enterprise fund, that enterprise funds are part of the, were part of the, the process. And I'm, that's where I'm, I don't have any problem voting in favor of that. But I, this may not be yet the time to do that. Yeah, well, it's, it's the committee's decision, so if I may. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would wait until we develop the whole process and when we're ready to hand it to them, we say, okay, now, how do we think they should raise it? Should it be through an enterprise fund or just a straight fee? Then go back to the law as to how it should be administered. 
So let's move forward with that. I would like to. Yeah, let's move forward. Uh, I, I'm happy with, uh, we've got the fee thing straightened out. Uh, Chris, I think you're next. Okay. Um, wait, wait a minute, unless Jim's got something. He handed out these. I don't know if that, you meant that to be. No, I don't else? have anything. That, that, uh, the information we handed out was to support Bob Reckman's discussion about the new fee algorithm. So okay. We have nothing to Fine. So, Chris. Um, if you didn't get it, I have hard copies here. Again, it was late in the day, um, and I couldn't get the photocopier here to do two pages on one piece of paper. So, oh, <laughs> I know the trees. The trees yeah. were screaming. Technology. As, as chairman of the tree committee, I, I'm feeling it. So. <laughs> you have one, Jim? No. Anybody, no. anybody need? Thank you, Frank. And and before I start, I want to I want to say respond to Frank's comment early about. Um, the idea of the peeling away of money for any sort of system of credits, I, I, totally, I, I, I totally take that to heart. I'm still learning about this. I did do some research into a couple of cities on whether they projected revenue foregone from any system of uh, pre credits or incentives, i.e. how much money they didn't bring in by offering these things. They don't, the accounting I, I saw just online didn't reflect that in any of the communities that I looked at, so I don't know how they're accounting for it, or if it's just so small a number, it's like a blip. But um, as I move forward, I'm definitely going to keep in heart your comments, because I think we have to understand that. And uh, I hope to spend some more time next week, rather than just doing website searches, actually getting on the phone and, and trying to track down some more. Well, if you look at MGL law, it clearly states uh, service and goods. Right, but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily. I don't know how that inter, interplays with how individual communities operate money flowing in and out of their their various enterprise funds and how they how they mark this off. For instance, in the credit thing, if it's a recurring credit and and you had been basically certified to be eligible for it, it could very well be reflected just as a, as a reduction on your bill rather than uh, a, a buyback or something like that. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm still learning, but I I. I appreciate that mind. comment. Um, so I've got it down to two pages. Um, I have, for the purposes of further discussion, defined in, in my mind what are exemptions, credits, and incentives. Um, exemptions, as I, as I look at it, um, are activities or entities that, by definition, within the fee structure are not subject to stormwater fees. Exemptions would target, and again, these are just my working definitions. This is not etched in stone. I haven't found a definition anywhere for any of these things, but this is the way they seem to operate. Credits are recurring reductions um, based on um, improvements that reduce either the rate of stormwater, and rate is different in that it has to do with how much water is coming back into the system in, in major storm events, the, the gallons per minute kind of measurement. Um, as opposed to volume, which has to do with the overall amount that's returned. Some places work on this idea of holding water back um, or, or, or reducing through various mechanisms like, a, a, I don't know, a ditch or something like that, that it will keep it from coming in at all. Um, and then the quality, which is an environmental remediation of some, some form or other. Um, and then, to my mind, incentives operate a lot like credits, except that they tend to be one time, and they tend to be targeted um, uh, credits are targeted at multi multi-family units and commercial entities, i.e., bigger, bigger, bigger generators. Uh, whereas incentives tend to be focused more on uh, smaller generators, uh, residential. Um, but again, this none of this is like uh, etched in stone. These are more sort of guidelines than rules. Um, looking at specific versions of uh, exemptions, and again, I'm not at the recommendation phase here. Phase here, I'm at the looking at it phase. Um, Exemptions, undeveloped properties, public streets and roadways, cemeteries, municipally owned properties, and I added back in because I forgot it, but I thought it was important. There are, there are at least a couple communities that, uh, that provide credits for people who operate septic systems. And the reason I include that and think it's important because it gets away from this idea of the commons. It's looking, it's looking specifically at what you're generating as opposed to this idea of we're all part of the, part of the same problem. So it's almost like an opt-out clause. Um, you're not part of the problem, so you don't have to be part of the solution. Um, credits, again, uh, they focus on primarily on management, uh, localized management of the amount of water that's com coming into the system, either in, in totality or the rate at which it does so. 
Um, quality, uh, again, this goes back primarily to the Richmond thing. I don't know what we do in Northampton with regard to, to localized compliance with the EPA. Uh, and maybe that's something that's going to be new when we see the new EPA regs. But I don't know what we require of, of anybody in, 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 the, in, in town as an example of, of uh, work that they do on site to do uh, comply with EPA regs. Other than COPE. We do, I know we do something with coke with regard to wastewater, right? Yeah. But beyond that, I don't know of any other requirements that the community has to deal with the environmental quality issue. Um, that's not to say that there aren't any, uh, but I, I'm just not aware of them. And then again, the list of incentives tend to be smaller operations. Um, and again, non-recurring <coughs> costs, you're going to do a rain garden once, you're going to do a rooftop garden once, that type of thing. And the other thing that I think is important is that the credits um, which tend to be more generous uh, and are at larger operations, would probably require some form of recurring um, uh, monitoring to ensure that, uh, that, that they were operational and functional. While, it, while on the smaller incentive ones, uh, since it's a one-time thing, um, I think you, you might be able to get away without uh, creating um, an inspection uh, regime or maybe a self-reporting one um, wh whereas, whereby, unless there was a serious problem with the system, you didn't really have to worry about it. So if it clearly stopped working and you wanted to improve it, as opposed to ongoing, ongoing con uh, con contributors to, to reduction where, where um, uh, you're, you're going to want to make sure that they're in good function because you're continuing to offer the credit. Uh, so that's where I am now. Um, I, I encourage more comments and thoughts about... Uh, where I can beat this up, and, and as I said, Frank, I, I, I Fred. Fred, sorry, Fred. Yeah. How many times have I done that tonight? Four. Yeah, last time. Um, uh, to to pay to pay special attention to how uh, how much this is actually costing communities. I haven't found any data on that, but I, but I, that's that's I, that's to me the one outstanding piece of, of major work that I need to do. Thank you. Great. Questions for Chris? I'd like to ask Doug the question. Doug, could you provide the committee with uh, the planning board's um, law on what they have to do with an acre, two acres, three acres, or a subdivision? Site, site disturbance. Yeah. For it's actually, there's planning board requirements. There's also a stormwater ordinance yeah. that, that the DPW implemented for any site that disturbs over. And is that available to us here so we can, yeah, yeah please make okay, it available. It's on our website. Oh, it is, okay. Yeah. All right. Because I know <coughs> there's, there's some significant things that have to be done. Uh, yeah. Or permit. Yeah. So I have a question about that on, on credits and exemptions. If, if something's required by permit, would that in addition, get some sort of credit from the stormwater. Um, I think it depends on how extensive it is. If it's extensive. If it's something it's very extensive, I say for the first year they should get a credit for doing it. Okay. So what about pre-existing properties that were, you know, modern? That's, another, that's another whole discussion. Yeah. Do you want to go back and do pre-existing or... I think I, I struggle with that. Uh, yeah. On pre-existing, I think that if it's um, a, an improvement that provides residual, you know, benefit to the system, that what you would do is you would um, you 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 would through an inspection see if it right. see if it met Functional. the standards of the current and just and just treat it as a renewal. Okay. And and move forward from there. Going back on on a one-time thing. I, I, that's a Pandora's yeah. box you may not want to get into unless yeah. it was really, really special. I'm thinking about you guys on that right. one. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, but you know, sort of, you know, smaller scale maintenance things, and 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 the problem with the implementation of any new major system like this is you're going to have to have a cutoff. Right. You're just there are just some things where you're just going to have to say so like to can't. You know? Start somewhere. Yeah. And uh, don't punish us for being smarter moving forward. We're just, you know, but right. uh, I, 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 I mean, I totally feel that. I haven't found anything in the literature. And again, I'm looking at, um, you know, really, I, I haven't had the opportunity to drill down to this level in any other community. So I don't, I haven't come across. It. 
It's one of the things I looked for, but I haven't seen it yet. There's doesn't not, mean it's not out there, though. There's not a lot to look at. Yeah. First one. So. Alex? It seems in practice, uh, somebody who wants a credit is going to have to make an application, and through the application process, prove that what they did has an ongoing yeah. effect on yeah. stormwater. And if they can prove that, then it seems to me, you know, it may have some cutoff in time. But it, if you have a system that you've, you've built and, and contributes, and you can prove that it contributes to reducing <laughs> Stormwater, then you ought to get some sort of credit for it. I think that that's equitable. I'm not sure whether it's a one-time credit or a continuing credit. I mean, it can be pretty small, but a continuing, uh, a continuing credit. That's you know, you can work that into the process of, of the inspection. You have to prove each year that in fact it works. Yeah. It's still working. It's up to date. Yeah, I, I, again, I keep going back to what Coley Dickinson Hospital did and. And they made a significant difference in the runoff that goes into Bay State. And uh, um, flooding was reduced quite a bit. Significantly and continues to be. Yeah. So that seems like yeah. a, something that they should get credit for. I mean, the City Council, in its infinite wisdom, could easily reach back and offer a one time credit to those, kind of to those types of projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly we could include that as a, a way to address past good behavior. Well, there might be more than a one-time credit for something that costs a million dollars or better yeah. to build and uh, continues to produce each year. Yeah. Well, and if it, again, if it yeah. continues to produce, the way I would I would see you tr treating it as, as it's just a renewal of your application for, you know, something that you would have in the future, because you're going to have to have a relicensing, <coughs> a re reapproval, yeah. reapplication. Yeah. A lot of the communities do it on a five-year cycle. Uh -huh. So something like that, and so you would just you would just say, it's treated as a new project, you know, and and you apply for the credit and you and you get it. Yeah. Yeah. David. Ruth, sorry. There's something else I don't want to forget either. Even for our trash bags, we have disability credits. That's something you might want to think about, and senior credits, that kind of yeah. thing, to work in. Do we still have? I thought we got rid of the senior credits on the bags. I, I think it's. We, I think we did this year. I yeah. Think, yeah. I think it's a, we, a. It's a an economic eligibility credit. Yeah. You do. You have yeah. to meet one of these ten. Um, commit. You have to be on one of these ten programs, to to get the credit. Um, if you're disabled, you get bags at half price four times a year. You get your sticker, um, discounted. And how do you prove that? You have to have a certificate from one of the ten programs. Basically, if you, qualify, if you qualify for a certain level of uh, state or federal assistance, you're automatically, that, that they use that That's as the threshold. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah. if you're blind, it's automatic. That's one of the programs. There's 10 disability programs. If you're on any one of those 10 programs, you just bring in your certificate, and it's that qualifies you. It's not for the guy you. that hangs a disability thing. No, <clears throat> no, I don't qualify. Yeah. I'm $26 over a month, one of the programs. So I don't get the, I don't qualify. I'm 100% in favor of credits. I think uh, it con con uh, butts heads with the 5 to 10% cap that we may be looking at. Yeah. So we're going to have this uh, constant challenge as, the, as this continues. And if it continues, and we're going to have the caps for the credits. Uh, I think we need to raise the $2 million number to act accurately reflect that. Otherwise, we're just, uh, it's disproportionate. We're not uh, reporting on the yeah. actual numbers. Now, I'm not going to make a comment. I, I, we shouldn't get focused on this $2 million because... Or X, I'm sorry. That's it, I agree. It, it, in X. my mind, X, that, whatever yeah, X Yeah, that is. number yeah. is uh, determinable, but indeterminate at this point. We need to... The number we started with, yeah. though? Mm -hmm. Sure. And, and, uh, Agreed. Yeah. And I agree. I think that's really important in uh, how we hit that number uh, because I want to see uh, you know, significant incentives. Uh, for people to either, you know, from your individual yard to a neighborhood to, uh, you know, whole sections of town uh, get together um, and, and, you know, improve the, the, the function of our system, um, alleviate, you know, high, you know, uh, rain event uh, incidences of flooding. And there's all sort of the more, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of different, uh, ways to landscape and, and do things and I, I really want to see that encouraged in the town. Uh, we 
talked about rain barrels, and I, I really want to see a visible result of, of this, um, you know, effort um, citywide. I, I think it's really important. You know, we live right against the river, and the more that we can do, uh, it's, it's really going to help long term. I, I don't know if it's any value to anybody, but there is a, um, a resource that I had gone through and I printed a copy of where somebody actually created a credit manual and it talks about the different types of credits, the percentages. So somebody's already done the work, and I found it helpful going through when it talks about who qualifies, can you go back. This particular township does go back as long as you have documentation that proves what the engineering was. Yes, mm -hmm. you can yeah. go in. But it also talked about that point where it gets to the breaking point where credits now start to become a problem in the total number of dollars yeah, needed. Right. And, and, and that's something that has been stuck in my head all the time as an educational institution. Yeah, we would be looking for credits. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's also a cost for that too and how much do people want to spend. So, I mean, there's a lot of checks and balances, but this manual was actually pretty helpful. What township is that? It's Northeast Ohio. And I can get the link. I mean, it's... No, <clears throat> But somebody actually went through the time and they created that manual and That's it's an great. online That's reference great. that talks yeah. to nice. all those logistics. There's no yeah. sense in redoing what somebody else nope. has done. Any of the towns Don't you try to recreate the wheel. No, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> yeah. There are other ones. Yeah, there, there's more, other ones out there. More discussion? The next, you can have that one. Oh, Just keep the it. next uh, uh, item is uh, John put the stockage up on Google Doc. And I want to thank John because I now have a Gmail account, which I didn't have before. So, <laughs> it. so now I can send email unknown to my wife. She only knows about my Comcast account. I haven't told her that I actually have a Gmail account. Oh, okay. And that's how I got the document. And I Does your wife watch these films? <laughs> I hope not. I'm in serious trouble. I'm in serious trouble anyway, but this will just be worse. Uh, before we're at that document around that John said, and I don't know if you want to talk about that or discuss it, or you want to thought about it and then go to this uh, chart here where we try to maybe figure out where we're aligned and where we are. And since Dan is up there, let's have him be the scorekeeper for this chart. Uh, I suggest we start at the bottom of the chart and not the top, because the top one says comments. We are likely to get hung up there quickly. So let's just read off what that, uh, what's, what's the first one say? I can't read it from here. Impervious. 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 Is that something that everybody thinks we need to include in the fee structure or not? Does anybody think we shouldn't? I think impervious. That's a we all agree it should be so, in there. So I think put all or unanimous or whatever just in the box there. We'll however you choose to score it is what we'll live with. Now. Okay, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Cans full of energy. So, so that's okay. <laughs> let's, let's just draw a line right across the bottom there, so we we all know, we know now. All of us are on board. A little extra effort, Dan. There we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Stay within the line. Should we give him a hand for that extra effort? Dan? <laughs> Uh, I can't, you'll have to read the next one. I can't read it. Pervious. 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 Does anybody think we should exclude that? I think let's score it all. Yeah. We all agree there's going to be. When we say in include, is it, include, who, who include. wants to include it? Include. Yeah. Pervious. Um. In some way, that means yeah. full so determinant, just a factor. No, no, these are just the yeah. principles that we are yeah. trying to get our hands yeah. around. Yeah. I was trying to get to the point where we, yeah. Yeah. Jim, what don't we agree on? Yeah, what don't Jim. we agree on? If, I, I, hey, Jim, if I added gross here, yeah. yeah. yep. would that allow us to then look at pervious? It doesn't. All right, so I'm going to go on to pervious because in my in the ERU, formula, it, it does not account for pervious. I, I need to look at this as far as exempting these large tracts of land, um, but I haven't done that yet. But basically, as a, uh, as a unit, it's just counting um, 
properties. And my intent was not to try to force us to view nanos and all no. this, but I was just trying to get a scatter plot of where are we. Sure. So we have one one no vote here on pervious. Yeah, so two. Two. Can you pervious the undeveloped lands? That. Well, per. No, don't ask Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not pervious. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't have undeveloped up No, it's not <laughs> impervious. It's not <laughs> impervious. <laughs> I was just going to say, don't ask Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> we don't but I don't think I don't think How are you defining it? Yeah, well, Dan has put on the table uh, this verse <laughs> that's written in there, and that, that'll allow us to, to play around with this a little bit, I think. But that's, I understand why one might want to put that up there. Gross area or... Uh, if we're not clear, why don't we just skip up to the ones we can... We can I'll on that one. Yeah, yeah. let's move. We'll go outside with the common ones and work down. Yeah. Maybe easier. No, no. <laughs> no. Let's not start with the common ones. We'll okay. what, what's the next one, Dan? Uh, Non-residential should pay. Yes. Right. And, and if yes. I disagree, no. I was just no. going to say that one of the shortcomings of these types of exercises is that it doesn't necessarily ask you what you want to know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think what 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 it's really asking is, are we going to consider the possibility of treating residential and non-residential differently? Separately. Right. And I think the answer, so I think you group them together and just say yes. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> or no, depending on how you yeah. feel about it. Yeah, and I, no, I'm sure, that's fine. So I'm confused. So non-residential, <laughs> that's the exemptions, that's federal, state, that's everything in that. Right. I don't agree with everything, just some of it. And that brings us back to previous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about residential? I think we can all say yes to residential. Don't, 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 don't. Oh right, Ruth, I think, you know, if we're trying to get up the chart, yeah. we can all agree on residential. And non resident Commercial and residential properties both should pay about the same amount. So you'd be would you be happier if we put commercial in where it says non residential and then had residential? Anybody disagree with what I just said? Mm -hmm. Well let's, let's well, change your name though. I mean commercial, non profit, institute you know, I mean well, how fine do we want to go no. with that? Yeah, I wanna include a city. I see. I mean that's I think that's the kind of the question in this. We go to table one, which was passed out by Jim, which was a stormwater utility table, which has residential, non-residential, multi-family, right? That, uh, that defines which ones they have. assume that non-residential was everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you yeah. need that if you're going to try to make the fish, so yeah. it's got to be in there. Yeah. yeah. Can we can no. fine-tune it later, right? Well, yeah, it's got to be in there. We can fine-tune what's in it later on. Mm -hmm. And the same with residential, of course. I think residential is the That's same. That's a gimme, yeah. And the next one is cap amount, which I assume means we would recommend there be some maximum fee? I don't know. Well, read the three that, that go down. They're all, they're all having to do with caps. Cap min-max, yeah. cap rate, cap rate increase, and cap amount. I think the cap amount was the total yeah. Yeah. Two million dollars yeah. annual. Yeah, and we've already right. said two million wasn't really. Well, it's not really it that. Just a, right. but, but we're going to cap it in the final figure is what this is saying. No greater than any override. <laughs> <laughs> well, th there's a lot of ways to make it, <laughs> but just to suggest. But that's a recommendation we could make. Uh, limit the well, total amount to some some value. So I, okay. my thought with the cap is that it is a staged or phased introduction of the fee, so that it's capped year one at a certain level, year two at a certain level, and year three we hit 
uh, the final goal. Do you recommend sort of phasing it in? Right, which might be a whole separate category. Okay. Um, so phased introduction. Right. Yeah, okay. that's what we talked about before. I would have put that in, in the rate part, the, the capping the rate one, two, three, and four, and five years. But mentally, that's the way I have thought about it. But, but I don't know that those are necessarily the right words up there. Cap rate increase? Tried to pull this chart together to see where we were together and where we were really far apart. And I'm sure we all have opinions about whether there should be the minimum fee anybody has to pay or mm -hmm. we, should limit, we should recommend that rates not go up more than 5% a year. We aren't going to have any effect on those decisions, I'm sorry to say. We can recommend whatever we want, but the powers that be who are going to set this up are going to make their own decisions. Well, and if, if, if that's the case, let me finish, Henry. And so we can recommend whatever we want for these things. I don't think that's a point of useful thing to do with our energy, because we're going to be split all over the place. And I'd be opposed to any recommendations about caps of any sort. Can we agree that we're going to take caps off the table? No. No? No. <laughs> no I think we have to cap. In all conscience, I, I think we have to at least recommend it, even if they're not right. going to yeah. listen to Fair it. Enough. I think we yeah. have to... At least tell yeah, them they may ignore the whole thing. So, so, so Dan, as a, as a starting point here, let's mark all the caps together, not try to do them individually, and say we're mostly agreed, but there, that we have some dissent. So that we, do I characterize that right around the table here, or is it is it split more than I think it's split? I think it may be split more than you think it is. But I would like to, uh, you know, I would like to see a cap on of, which part, Jim? Of, a, a total cap. Mm -hmm. on well, the let's just go around budget. the table and find out who, yeah. who's who's where. Then yeah. we can. Yeah, this uh, is a on, point yeah. where we're yeah. all. On a cap, would you would you want it to be a hard cap or a, with or a cap with a phase out? It could be a cap with a phase out. Because I'm I'm willing to go along with the concept of caps provided it's a phase out and the, and, the, and the reason for having them is to avoid sticker shock and get people used to paying into the system um, and I would apply that sort of eyeglass to any to discussion of any of the cap amounts uh, with the exception of the minimum which I think should be a hard minimum um, I don't think it has to be a big one but it, I want I want people to understand you can't credit yourself out of the system Mm -hmm. So those that, those are the those are the sort of the two guiding features I, I I brought to my thinking about caps is that they're temporary they're phased out they're they're to get a buy in and and they're used to make sure nobody pays nothing. Yeah. Why why a phase? Um, because I think that if you're gonna for instance uh, if you were to put a hard cap on the total annual budget it's not reflective of reality that at some point you're gonna have to do an override and I don't want to be doing overrides on enterprise funds. So um, it may be that you you know you re you you readdress the idea of the cap, but but I just don't want to see something done in perpetuity. So maybe you have like a, a three or five year review of, about where you are in these things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I the idea that you're just going to say now and in, in perpetuity we're never going to do more than this. I just don't don't think is reflective of reality. And it's artificial. Yeah. 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 No. Hi. Say more more relevant is uh, who who decides who sets the rate who sets the rate and I think that it's a political decision yeah. not a uh, should be a political decision. So, don't so you don't think we should have caps? Then. No. Well, he, he, what he's saying is he thinks yeah. if the city council sets the rate, there will effectively be political control over how much those rates can go up. Is Absolutely. that correct? Yes. That's what he's saying. Well, what I'm trying to get is what this group here wants to do. I'm I'm less concerned about what city council is going to do at some other time. Okay. So, I'm therefore, to... we can recommend that the city council set the rates. Mm -hmm. and that's one way yeah, we address yeah, we can... the cap issue. I would, I, that would, I would support something yeah. that, that, rather than caps. I definitely want caps, um, but phased out, you know, so much next year, so much for like five years, only because I don't want to see everybody's bill double next year and right. double again the year after that. and just keep going up as we've seen so many other things do not exactly double but you get the, the idea. Um.
but again, I realize it's just a recommendation and it's very likely to be ignored, but I'd at least like to have my two cents in there. So can we mark, can we mark Ruth down as uh, at yes. least in yes. principle interested in Within some kinds of caps <laughs> to be yeah. determined? I'm, 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 we lump them all together there. Yeah, and I do think the idea of a, a minimum that you can't credit out below mm -hmm. is very definitely a good idea too. Something like on the uh, Cohane Beckman method, you've got the uh, credit portion below, so you can't go below that. I mean the common portion, so you can't go below yes that or, or no something. Your calendar. I'll just try to see how how split we are on this cap thing. I'd love them all. No, I'll go yes. I'm, I'm, I, I, I conceptually, I can I can get behind cap. Okay. I, I know how I want it structured, but I can get behind. It. Chris says yes. I'll say yes. <laughs> Abandoning. Wow, I have no idea you had that kind of power. David, David says yes too. You should be sitting right. in this chair, and I'll sit there, and you can get this thing done. We don't want that. Yeah, yes, yes for Rick pretty too. Alone. Pretty isolated out there. Yeah. <laughs> An island. So that's an uh, well, we can't properly vote for the birthday girl, so we have to pass it over. How about Rick? What, how, yeah, I'm a for? yes on caps. You're a yes on caps. How about you, John? Not knowing the formula, I don't know how you talk about cash. I mean, if you don't know what the formula is going to be, I think Chris brings up a good point about credits that you credit yourself out. But is that really a, a cap? Uh, so I, I I don't know what cap means. So I, I think there should be maybe a maximum increase each year because of that stepper shot. A rate cap. Yeah. Yeah. Rate cap. I mean, so I, that's all included. Yeah, that's. Yeah. So I mean, it's a yes, but. In, in principle. Yeah, yeah. a little yes. Yeah. That's a little that one. John, 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 no, I don't want a little one because it's going to be really close to Bob in the yeah. house. So yeah. It's got to be at least a medium. Just don't That's stop. Okay. Please. All right, I lost that. Fair enough. David, they haven't heard from you. No, I'm, I'm a yes. Uh, Emery, how about you? Yes. John, you're exactly where I am. I'm. I, I, I yeah. just. That's what I'm saying. In principle, I'm not opposed no. to it, but I, I want to. I want to work out. The yeah, I'm going to be writing that. If there's recommendations on caps, I'm going to be writing that one that says you ought to. You ought to think about it, as opposed to well, you ought it, to not think about it. it. It goes back to David bringing us back to you know what the charge is to recommend general principles that will guide the new funding with particular focus on equity and transparency, but then it's the formula. Yeah. Recommendation go an actual an actual formula. Yeah. We haven't even got to that. Yeah. Maybe the maybe the two are mutually exclusive. Maybe that we can't fulfill both portions of that. Where we're going to talk about general principles and then come up with a specific formula. It's complicated. Yeah. 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 It really it, and it goes and it goes back to I don't know which one it's in, in Jim's meeting notes, but we did have one motion that talked about revisiting this on the 14th if we had enough information to go back on the 31st. And tonight we said, well, we're going to meet the mandate of the 31st. I have to object to that. I don't think we're ready for that. I, I agree. I thought we were going to revisit that. Uh, and make a recommendation. Yeah, yeah. You know, do we need more time? And what's I, the I suggest we go through this and when we, when we yeah. look at this when we get done. We may, this may say we need to go back and we'll take this chart or the results of this chart with us if that's what we need as look at we've worked hard here every week for so and so many weeks and, and we did kind of a big look and here's kind of where we are and we need some things that get filled in or maybe it'll all come out and we agree on everything. I have my doubts about that but yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, I propose we go through this and then look at the whole thing and then decide, okay. hey, Fine. we can mm -hmm. come back. Yeah. We can come back. Okay. okay. So the next one was exclusions. Yeah. Or exemptions. See, honestly, yeah. I would like to, I would like to, in cap rate increase, I would like to put no. Cap rate, I would like to put yes. In cap rate, min-max, I would like to put yes. Yeah, you can fill it out in whatever detail you So can. cap rate increase, I would put no. David is over to the right. So no. Don't cap the rate increase. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And then cap rate, I would put yes. And cap min max, going to uh, Chris's point about not opting out or getting out, as I would, I would, I would ask for a min max. I would say yes. Okay. Now, it's how you determine what what those words yeah. mean, but how I interpret things 
uh, you know, when the doctor talked about a cap rate, uh, I would ask for a cap rate. And then, you know, how you, how you, it could be a 20 line item or 20 bullets to how you determine a cap rate. Mm. Okay. But you wouldn't okay. cap the rating just to, to um, qualify. The rate increase would not be capped. It could go up 10%, it could go up 2%. It really depends on what. It needs. Because in my bullet points would be it could go up based on the city council vote. Ah, so that's that's yeah. that's worth it. Ah. Yeah. Could go up way based on a city council vote. Yeah. But if they're city council so I'm a, I, I'm oh, well uh, that's that's uh, given on every one I, of the I, I, I understand, yeah. but yeah. we're but I'm only answering the question for time. Oh, okay. Right. I'm only right. answering the question. It may be a given, it may not, but mm -hmm. if I was I would vote for a cap rate increase. If it was approved by the city council, yeah, okay. Because I feel there's going to, be, as with Westfield and Newton, you're going to figure out that they yeah. need yeah. more money. They're going to figure out, yeah. and it's going to be, it's going to go back to the political. Yeah. yeah. But do you, th Jim? Do you, do you think there's an effective political control over the water rates and sewer rates now? No. <laughs> no. Okay. So I'm, I'm saying that <laughs> this because piece I don't of, think oh, I don't oh, oh, think. Wow. I don't think the city council sits down and studies those. Yeah. <laughs> they they go on a recommendation, they and of what the department recommends, and they are taking the decision of the board of public works that this is what is needed in order to keep the system operating the way it should be. Council votes on overall budget. It doesn't vote. Doesn't vote on water and sewer rates. Doesn't water on. It votes on the budget. That's the only bite you get at the apple. Yeah. I mean, that's not to say that they can't object to certain parts of the uh, of the budget. For example, every every very large capital project which has a has an impact on the rate that requires bonding requires city council approval. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there, there there is some sort of system of checks and balances relative to how these enterprise funds work. It's not like you know they're, they're like on better and somehow unchecked. But by the same token, Jim's right. I mean, you don't get a lot of questions about how the how these utilities are run uh, by the council. I mean, obviously, you guys are former councilors and understand how that works better than I do. But um, you know, there's a certain amount of um, trust in the way the department runs things as professionals, and, and you take that into account. But all budgets are are reviewed by the mayor and by the council, and there's some some system of checks and balances there. There is, but the way the the, the sewer and water rate enterprise fund is set up, it's it's, it's very difficult. Uh, the question just isn't presented specifically enough. You can there are ways you can affect it in the budget votes, but it's it's a pretty uh, it's tenuous connection. Well, yeah, except that the, that the board of public works, which has the authority to accept or or, or reject the sewer rates is appointed and, and confirmed by the city council. Right. It's not the same as the city yeah. council, but I mean, no structure of government has everybody doing everything all the time. But setting rates um, like this without elected officials, I think, becomes the issue. It, yeah. it, it right. may very well be the issue, but it, but for the two enterprise funds we currently operate, that's the way we do it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I understand that that's the so. tradition, but we are just a, making a recommendation. A different there's yeah. a, there's a there's a difference here, though. I think this, if what I heard is going to be right in the discussion that we've had, this will be re recommended by the uh, joint committee. So there's two members of the city council looking at this and two members of the Board of Public Works looking at every recommendation that comes out of this. And it has to be then brought to the city council and voted. So they get two bites at it. The two city councilors that are sitting on the, on the, the committee. The initial setup. We're yeah. talking about, you know, as this moves down the road, as you as you Well, decide. even an increase. An increase will be brought to the uh, to so, the committee, to the, the joint, joint committee. committee, and even to argue against myself, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the enterprise funds that we currently operate are are based on tangible use and yeah. supply Meters, numbers. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. And, very hard to argue yeah. with. Yeah. So it's it, it's it's a little it's, it's, yeah. yeah. So I reject my observation. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, there is the option of taxing the rain. Yeah, the rain. Yeah. <laughs> Send the bill to God. <laughs> Let's try the next line there. Well, do we want to everybody go through that? Because there's a lot. There's a lot there that's meaningful in our final recommendation. Yeah. Are we all in agreement on exclusions and credits? The you know the availability of those. It depends on the model we end up recommending. Because some models have got more exclusions built into them than others. Well, uh, uh, what I suggest we do is say this. If, if we agree these principles, we'll then build a model to fit the principles and not go pick the principles to pick the model. Right. Right. Let's, uh, okay. That's kind of the thought process that I was I like getting to here, that if we could get our hands on the principles we were really thinking about, then we could go sort through the models and say, okay, which of the <coughs> models does its best job or do we have to smush a couple together or whatever you might do. That, that's so in principle, yes to credits. In principle, yes to inclusion. Is that are we unanimous on that? So just yeah. Yeah. That I, all I, I think. I think that's an all. Unless anyone Bob. No, I fine with me. Then I think we should let Bob score the last one, and we'll give we'll give <laughs> we'll give Dan a break. <laughs> well, do we want to go back to, to this previous yeah, no, no, question here, whether or not we want to include non-impervious areas into a formula? It sounded like I was the only one, and what? And, and that, I would say yes. Means, can, can we recognize you? Yes, we can. I just wanted to say, Mike, I have a little, a little bit of difficulty looking at the factors and understanding exactly what's being asked. So I'm wondering, Dan, whether it would help if, when you talk about pervious um, surface, it, I think it reflects more like the model that you proposed, where you're using a runoff factor that comes through a pervious and impervious. So mm -hmm. when you think about the question about pervious, think about whether you want to use a runoff factor, because that's, that's more how it would come into play, I think, if that's, if that's would, accurate. You wouldn't have to. Well, how, so, else, how else might it? Different rate. Oh, okay. Right? Right. A yeah. penny per square foot versus, right. you know, four cents. So that but one. I'm still doing, I'm doing a no there. I'm start. So yeah. when we're talking about no, undeveloped David. land, that wouldn't be pervious. Say that again. When we're talking about undeveloped land, where in all these things that are listed up there, where would you consider that? Well, then that on the undeveloped land would either come out on an exclusion or we'd capture it in a gross. Okay, then yeah. no for me on previous. Huh. No for me too. That would be a gross. Mm -hmm. Anybody a yes? I, think we're all I have I have stayed. I don't think there is one of those. It's either a Y or a no. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. That's what you have to do. Write it in black. No, we can't give Jim an A. He's got to get an X. Is <laughs> I mean, we have the ability to change our minds. Be the first one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's because it's in red on paper. It doesn't mean it's permanent. That's correct. <laughs> but it is a permanent marker yet. Yeah. yeah. I guess I'm a no on on pervious too. Hmm. At least me. Well, you, Emery, and Chris. I'm no. So you're separating a gross. Uh, yeah, we'll do gross separately. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. No, for pervious. Mm. I said yes for gross. And Chris? Yeah, then I'll go now. Okay. Oh. And then so gross? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Anybody know on gross? I do a mean, so it would have to be a no on gross area too, I believe. <laughs> um, it's unless we we have a tiered maybe it's tiered still. Yours is all impervious, Rick. It is all impervious. It is. It's not gross. Neither does roof. 
Yeah, so you, I, you I would have to be a no on the gross, too, at, at this point. I okay. wish there was a way to... I tell you, mine, I like the... Uh, the Colleen Reckman one is so close to mine, and my figures were whack to begin with. It's got the tiered system for the single, double, and triple family. The numbers make a lot more sense than mine, and it's got the same process that I had. It's just a lot more lined up than mine was. It, Jim, if you hadn't worked with mine at all, mine wouldn't make any sense at all. <laughs> I mean, I tried, but I'm not an engineer. I just didn't know what I was doing. The numbers, the, the idea that I had is the same idea that you have. Um, I'm more than willing to just, you know, narrow things down and take mine off because a lot of my numbers still don't really make sense and all my concepts are in yours. Okay. And that would bring us a little bit closer to a resolution. Mine really hasn't been, except for the, the tears, which are in yours. Mm -hmm. So other than that, mine really hasn't been in contention for anything. So with this new one that you guys have that I like, I really do, if everybody's in agreement, I would say we should just take mine out of there because it's just kind of muddying the waters a little bit. Well, I wouldn't quite say that, Ruth, but I, I get your point. Um, yours, yours and mine uh, have lined up pretty closely, I've, I've looked at, so I'm, I'm fine if you, if you want to remove yours, but... Um, you know, if we're trying to minimize, you know, narrow them down some, it, it, it might make sense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave mine in. The big thing on mine was the tiers, the, the simplicity of the tiers. Yeah. yeah. And um, the Colhane Reckman one has that on the commons included. Yeah. And I like the idea, I mean, I've, I've kind of heard everybody talking and listened to what everybody has said about having a for having that little commons in there. I still don't agree with having the city pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, if you look at the numbers on yours and the numbers on mine, yours are actually lower than mine. And I have big gaps in mine where the undeveloped land isn't even in there. I've got $3 on, on one. I mean, my numbers still, even with Jim's help, don't make sense in places. Yes. But that one's based on Westfield, right? It, yeah, and Westfield so is down the two. I think it should stay in because Westfield is one that should be considered, even though they're struggling with it. But yeah. it could be part of our recommendation that we did look at the Westfield model, and because of these reasons. Well, my numbers are not the same as Westfield anymore. No, but the way it is. Let's not pull any of the formulas out at this yeah. point. Yeah. Right? Let's, yeah. We, yeah. We've okay. gone. Now, do we want to have a go at the comments? The sure. one on the top? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm a, I'm a new one, Thomas. I'm a no as well. And I'm a yes, I'm surprised. I'm a half no. I'm a no one comments <laughs> for the city, but I'm a yes for the part that you have included in, in the in your um, Colhane Reckman. So you like the idea of the common fee, but you don't I want, don't want the city to pay it. I don't want the city to pay or the state. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's this is only. the commons fee that we're that's up to you. Okay. So I think we already separate commons. We voted fee. on the city of well, Yeah. We voted twice. Right? <laughs> yeah. Not totally. We go either way, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. We're getting this there. is about a commons <laughs> fee that's part of yeah. the the fee structure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they've got it like a floor. It doesn't say who pays it and who doesn't. Emory no. Jim? So that, would that make me a yes or a no? I think you're a no. I think you'd be a yes. But I want this, yeah, the way they have it. Yeah, I'm a, yes. Yes. If I'm a yes, I think you're a yes. Yes. Like you say, I can always change it later. Yes. But you gave John's yes in Jim's spot. The nose are calling a timeout. Is that right? <laughs> I thought, who no, else did yes. didn't, John, didn't you say yes, John? No, John no. Oh, I misunderstood. John I misheard. <laughs> Again, not, I mean, it's like throwing dots, honestly. 
I mean, not yeah. really knowing what formula we're going to go with and how the formula is derived, what the, the total number is that is really of identified need. This is a, I mean, it's a general principle. Do we want to develop yep. a formula that has a common or no? That's why I'm confused with Ruth, this Ruth's answer. I, I think that you don't want a commons fee, but you like how they built their commons including. I like having a floor, that everybody pays a floor, and the numbers work out. I see. Okay. Without the commons fee in your formula, there's a zero yeah. for, for some. Yeah. Okay. So the I mean, commons fee, if I'm if I'm stating this properly, is using is taking all of the sort of common areas, city property, roads, and using that to develop almost a percentage of the overall budget, and then redistributing that back out in some way to all the ratepayers. That's the commons. That's exactly fee. right. Yes. Yeah. So with that definition, I'd I'd vote yes. Five? Yeah. yeah. Where's Megan when you need her? Yeah, where's, where's <laughs> Megan when you need her? <laughs> Happy birthday cake. <laughs> yeah. I've been a no right along, well, but I think we should have a floor. Well, this is not about can't... a floor, because that's the floor is sort of a cap mm -hmm. minimum. Yeah. 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 This is not, this is about yeah. using this commons number, this 20% of the city square footage. And then trying to build that a different yeah. and trying to but use it, that that it's actually using that to create the floor. Yeah, yeah. That's and right. that and this that works out for me as a really good number for a floor. That's why I changed the yes because number. the numbers in the here. The commons fee, the, the commons fee hits every property. And the it's it's not too is high. Just calling the six that's for a single family half acre or less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're okay, sixteen. Out to be the commons fee. Three hundred ninety-nine. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, the way you figured, if you, way you figured it, it just seems like a good number. It's not too high. It's it's a good way to compute that floor that I'm looking for. So this is this that's actually the crux right, at this point of the of the whole thing because we've mm -hmm. agreed on you know, impervious. Yeah. So we know that that's going to be part of the formula, and it's sort of how we deal with the commons or not. And whether or not gross gross area comes in to deal with the commons, or do you just do gross area and use that as a way to? Quick question on that. I see Terry's left, but he mentioned before. Did you guys find some other examples where they? He was mentioning how uh, different cities were taking a percentage of. It. What? you have some examples of that? Because I couldn't find another example. I don't have it with me. Doug did a lot of research on that. Um, and we found, I mean, just with a quick quick amount of uh, research last the last meeting, we found like three or four towns, um, and there was some other documentation in an EPA report, but it's commonly, they said it's commonly used that the revenue requirement um, is divided into 20% um, pervious area, 20% of your revenue comes from pervious area, and 80% would be attributed to pervious area. So another way to look at that too, Rick, is like your, the, the ERU method that you had suggested and that CDM had suggested, 100% of the revenue comes from the pervious area. Yeah. So this 2080 is a way of getting some portion of your revenue attributed to, to the pervious <coughs> land. So it's, you know, it's one way of recognizing that everybody should contribute, and that number could really be it could be anything that you decided based on what you think is fair, right? It could be 25, 75, 30, 70, 50, 50, or whatever the circumstance would be. But EPA said 2080 is, is uh, commonly used, and we did find three or four examples fairly quickly online and indicated, you know, that was the number that right. the folks had used. That, that helps. That, I, I think I might need to talk to you guys just to adjust mine so there is a, a minimum. And, and I think, you know, with the Terry, with the, with the Reckman-Colain method, or the Colain, 
recommend that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think Terry thought that um, it made it was elegant in the way that the the common is just defined as twenty percent in Northampton based on the, the calculations we've done and distributed at the last meeting. So he said in a way um, it meets sort of the desire of some people to have a commons fee and then also the twenty eighty sort of also matches what has been determined to be equitable in other communities. I mean I think there was some he was interested in that. It's, yeah. it's coincidental. Yeah. Okay. But it's elegant. And the four hundred thousand is twenty percent. It's coincidental. coincidental. <laughs> well it's coincidental we, and the I, sorry. If if we took this to the uh, Direct committee now, and then we could say to them, we have a set of principles here, but we have one principle which we have a split decision on, and we suspect that that split decision will be out in the community as well. I mean, because I think people around this table are roughly representative of the community, and and. Uh, we could spend a huge amount of time trying to resolve that. Uh, maybe not even get it resolved into a formula or a fee structure recommendation. But so if I understand correctly, we have two proposed fee structures, Rick's and Dan's, which don't rely on a common fee. Is that correct? And yours? No, yeah. mine does. Well, we'll just subtract it out. You, it, it could right. just be built in. You're right. We just, mine mine we, should be we, done without separating the commons out. Just, just that's subtract right. it out. Okay. I mean, it's okay. just uh, A minus B. That's the number. And uh, you're done. That's and nothing out of the general fund. Right. That's, I think, the point. The problem with that, I know, I know that if Terry was here, he would say that the problem with that is the use of the commons fee was the means that that method is able to send sort of the baseline bill to undeveloped properties. So if you take it out, then the rate is only based on, on the impervious area. If you take the commons area out, right? so no, but you but you you leave it in, but you bill it the same way. You would still figure out the bill for each property the same way, but it wouldn't become a commons fee. It wouldn't right. be billed differently. Right. So uh, you could still include the commons fee. You got to get the twenty percent in the budget, but you just plain bill it as the straight fee. You don't break it out and bill it in a different fashion. Right. So we, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So what you're saying is, is that your rate would be that same column, and you would calculate your rate using a 20 percent and an 80 percent. That's you right. You just wouldn't call it a common That's fee. Exactly right. Exactly right. Okay. Right. I think our recommendation would be that we have framed this, and that uh, the city council needs to make a decision. Right. On what they want to propose, and that we have a way that you can figure it with it, or A minus B. Recommendation from this group is that it's a tough decision, and we are split on it. Representative yeah. of the community, yeah. and let the ship sail. You guys and concentrate on the other stuff. <laughs> nice. That's that, that would be a way to keep this moving, mm -hmm. and let the uh, let the general public have access right. also. That's right. Yeah. And because it is, it's a tough one. I'm listening to you now, and I can <laughs> any other way, you know, if because were, I understand. I understand that. If it were a company, somebody would make the decision, yeah. and you'd go forward. Whether the decision is right or wrong would be another question, but somebody would. In this case, the citizens are entitled to make the decision, at least in my opinion. And we were split on it. We, yeah, we shouldn't uh, we we cast out We're not in spot. disagreement. We just mm -hmm. can't agree. Agree on it. You, you look like you're ha having an ulcer. Spent. I'm done. <laughs> yes. Seven o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were going to, uh, w whether we're going to meet this deadline or not, um, just in my thinking, part of that deadline, Jim, I think you explained this to us, we, we work backwards on the calendar when they need to get to the state with this proposed fee. Um, we would be eating into, I guess, public comment time between the time we turn this over to the committee or the joint committee and when this all starts rolling. So if we do need more time, I think that, um, you know, we, I would like um, this uh, either Councilor Specter or someone to ramp up the education part of what's going on here 
Um, if we if we're set on giving them a recommendation on the 31st, then then fine. We're still going to need that education. But if we go two weeks longer, I just see it as um, you know the work that they're going to need to do to to get the public involved in this. Yeah. Um, just kind of shifts over to here. Maybe they start jointly meeting with us or, or whatever until we can come up with some recommendation. It's just my thought on an extension. They're gonna they're gonna have if a hard time educating the public about this. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like it almost it's almost better if if we are a little bit more hmm. concise and con you know, we'll, there'll be less work from an educational perspective if we're clear or with what we yeah. present. Mm -hmm. um, so right now we have before, if we go Thursday, Thursday, we have two more meetings between now and the 30th. Yep. Do we feel that we can get a meaningful piece of work done with two meetings left? Assuming that um, we're going to have to do the signing of the writing I mean, if we're going to break it seven, we're not going to do that tonight. Um, it seems to me that we can easily designate the staff and ask them to write up a good summary of all our activities so far. And where we are. Where we are. Just well, through background, to, oh, background information. I wouldn't do that yet. No. Just background. Not what we're going to decide. No. Yeah. But just all the things we've been through and thought about. I think it's a little bit... Too soon. Mm -hmm. I think we got two more meetings, yep. and once the two meetings are done, okay. then I think the we have to assess exactly where we are after the two meetings okay. and make a decision as to whether or not we go to the joint committee and say to them, "We aren't meeting your deadline, okay. and we need a couple of more weeks, or we need three weeks, or this is the package." And you have to take it from here. Yeah, right. Jim, I, uh, I never, when I had a, a real job, I never liked surprises. And if someone came in to me with a due date and said I needed an extension, that was usually uh, one of those chances that somebody might get asked to leave my office, mm -hmm. or wish they had left. Mm -hmm. I think we owe them uh, a heads up. Yeah. And I'd like to propose that I'll write Spectre and just flat out tell him that we're not going to have it all done to the 31st because we have too much to do and we just went through this analysis and at the 31st we'll be at a point we could prepare a report. If that's a motion, I second it. Well, yeah, well, well, well I need to say something. <laughs> We've already done that. We already made a motion mm -hmm. that on the 14th of May we would look at where we are and make a decision if we have to go ask for an extension. We've yes. already done that. We've already made the motion. That's unless we're going to change the motion. Well, well, we, had, we didn't know where we'd be. And what they're saying now is they don't think we can make the deadline. And that's what we said in the motion. Yes, no, we didn't say that. We said we'd re-examine today. Right. Tonight. And let them know. And let them know. Yeah, right. and that's okay. what we're going to do. So why make another motion? Well, well I, 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 I think we can do a motion. It. I, but somebody I needs to write a letter to Specter or... Or I agree with Emery that we shouldn't uh, wait until the 31st or the no, 30th okay. and Absolutely. drop the bomb. Yeah. Because that's what they did to Slow us. Down. Right. Okay. So I want to turn the other cheek here. <laughs> okay. I don't want to have another uh, meltdown. Uh, <laughs> and and the, uh, the other thing is that October date, I think when we get further along here, that that date may not be as relevant as it was purported to be. Um, but that's another discussion. So that I agree with John. We, you know, we did it, but out of courtesy uh, that we could do that and say, you know, we'll try, but we don't know if we're going to make it. That was my motion, actually, just to mm -hmm. not to tell them anything. But Would it feel work. better if we had three three more meetings before we have to get them something? I mean, I think we'll know when it's right. If Bob, I think change, you're going to know. Yes, this is the formula. We might need ideas. a few more meetings than three. <laughs> yeah. So Maybe. should we ask for an extension now? I mean, John is right. We did discuss. This oh yeah. 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 I agree. Well, I think we. Well, I would just call Paul and say, you know, we don't think we're going to make it. Uh, we need some more time. I don't know how much more time we need. But, you know, and to be honest, I think that's the best virtue we can go forward with. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we're not ready. It's not fair. It's not clear enough. And it goes back to those three things. What was it? Cohesive, comprehensive, uh -huh. and consistent. Uh -huh. If we haven't met those, then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
in, in public awareness, the more we do on the front end, no the easier it's going to be for them to understand to sell it. They'll take yeah. a recommendation. Oh, I agree with you. Yeah. 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 But if we don't, we need to let them know. Yeah. And yeah. It doesn't yeah. seem yeah. like that. Yeah. I, to me, That's a minimum of two weeks. I, I'm pretty and, comfortable yeah, yeah, absolutely. that we have, have done due diligence. Oh, We've absolutely. met every week for several weeks. People have done a lot of work. Uh, PPW's done a lot of work for us. I don't think it's because we didn't try. No. no. And uh, you know, one night we'll arguing, we we'll get more try. order there, whatever. But there's a huge amount of education that's gone on amongst ourselves. We've learned a bunch, uh, and there's a lot more to learn. So I'm not ashamed of where we are at all. I have no what thing about. You're going to tell me can't do well, it. No. John is saying we we already, already I don't. I don't we, we decided. If I remember correctly, the purpose of our meeting tonight was to decide if we could make it. And what I'm proposing is that we now decide if we think we can do it okay. in two more weeks. Yes. Or if we need more time. Yes. That's all I'm saying. Go. Yes you want to make no. a motion? I don't I think we should put a date on it. I don't think we should say we need another week or okay. two weeks. We just need more time. Okay. So that's your motion. I second that. All in favor. We need more time. Need more time. Yeah. Opposed. Oh, I, I didn't get that. Oop, wait a minute. So the, uh, that's, that's uh, in favor of <laughs> damn. In, in favor of the <laughs> motion? Tried. Ruth, Dan, John, Rick. We've got one, two more six. times. In favor of more time. Six. More time. Seven. More time. Yeah. More time. Seven yeah. for yeah. more time. Yeah. Opposed? Two. Seven to two. Okay. Nine to two. Or it must be. No. Later. No. Okay. You can stop here. I've got one there. Okay. okay. So, the, 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 next week's the next time. Meeting. Yeah. Same time, same place? Yeah. Right? I'll be absent. Okay. Sorry. But we can make a final decision. <laughs> <laughs> I'd recommend that. <laughs> <laughs>